The University Tower chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mile, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. To my right, it's Professor Stephen Manning. What's that you? On? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> the silence is deafening. So in I am the a man of few words. Yes. Nothing to say to me. <laughs> no, no, no. It reminded me. Um, so my uh, kids' uh, high school put on a stage show of Christmas Carol last year because, you know, reasons. It's the holidays and all that. And if you read the original script, Dickens' original script, when the two uh, folks who are shopping for Scrooge to make a donation, you know, to the poor, when they come in, they say good morning to every character they run across, and then also him, and it's also his dismissive way of getting rid of them. Good morning. Like, he keeps repeating it, and then when they leave, they say good morning to everybody when they leave his office. And this is the way you were like, good afternoon. I was, we'd have to go around the table. Everybody has we're to done. say it. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. <clears throat> but I'm not trying to be dismissive of you, Stephen. Not, not at all. So, You're not Ebenezer Scrooge. No, I'm not. Before. Glad yeah. to hear that. Yes. So how are things? How, oh, how is the recovery of your canine? Good. Thank you for asking. Sweet good. Pup. He doesn't uh, have his cone on anymore. No, no. He's, he's butt naked on cone, the leg. Which is good. He's actually, I think just this week, he had a second post-op follow-up on Monday. Okay. They said everything is fine. Oh, good. good, good. Yesterday, no, this morning he finished his last of a series of medications uh, germane to the surgery. So he's off that. We have to wait a week until we put him back on his steroid. The eye. Yeah. What the is eye folks doing steroids? So he's on. getting some crusty eye stuff, and we have to wait a week until he... But then that'll go away after that. But the thing is, he's they shaved so much of his rear hind quarter, mm -hmm. and that may never come back. That's right. Because of his thyroid Remember condition. you saying that. Oh, wow. So he's going to look kind of funny. And uh, for yeah. the rest of his life, I guess I, we're I, thinking we're thinking I'm actually high. quarter to pay. That's what well, we are thinking of. We can collect enough mm. um, fur and fur around the house yeah. periodically and to reconstitute another dog. When, when we occasionally idea. clean the house, and we were thinking of giving it to Olivia to knit some <laughs> mittens or something. But we're thinking now we're forming it into a a patch that fits and getting out the old uh, the old Elmers and patching it on him, but. I think See, he could do better and than he's just, just the last couple of days, he has, I think since maybe Monday or Tuesday, he, he always has slept upstairs with us. Okay. There's a room off the master bedroom that has been his. He's got his bed there. He's up because he's a pack animal. You know, he likes to be with his pack. And uh, as long as he understands his place in that pack, which is not all the time. But uh, just beginning Monday or Tuesday, and when I go up, I always you know, come upstairs with us, and he kind of looks and... <clears throat> and I think his leg is telling him, I don't want to negotiate the stairs. Oh, but on Monday or Tuesday, he came up for the first time, and he's been up okay. every night since. So, good. so that's, that's good. a return to normal, and the yeah. leg is, uh, he's limping less. So everything is fine. Everything's on the bend. Oh, that's good. good. But we still can't let him run around off the leash for another, right. you know, probably two months. That, that's what Heather said about you. So. <laughs> <laughs> So if when, ever there was a transition. <laughs> nice segue, Dan. That's really thank, thank you for saving me from the lawsuit, man. I will not, uh, I will not uh, have the cookies introduce themselves. But we'll move across the table, as always, the forest of mics. Uh, Professor uh, Jim Tubbs is here, and we're just we're not going to see you for a while, Jim. Uh, that's true. That's true. The next uh, four, four months, at least. Yeah. yeah. A little over a month. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I will be on the other side of the world. That's Remember, awesome. you have to flush your toilet for us. I'm going to do it. Oh, he's going to take video. A dunny. Yeah. A dunglo. <laughs> That's what Australians call. A dunglo? Yeah. Call a toilet? Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you didn't know this? See, I learned yeah. something new on the show. Right. <laughs> Hasn't anybody read the thorn birds with me? Come on. When no, are we you, getting the question set you about Australian slang? Yeah, seriously. I've got the question set coming on. Is that, I on exactly did have exactly this on That's right. Be right. right. careful what you say in foreign countries because it's sometimes it's translated into something right. different. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Continuing around the table, thanks for bringing the cookies. Uh, Professor Dan Maggio is here. Hello. How's it going, Dan? Good. Excellent, Baker. Good week. We talk You're my week, star baker. We, uh, we are definitely getting excited about uh, um, fish fry season oh, coming up. Oh. It's such a very important time oh. of year, you know? I really That's right. It's an opening day. Now, I like how, how the message starts with the 
the trials and tribulations of the church and overcoming Jesus and then the fish babies. Where's the tartar sauce? Where's the tartar sauce? <laughs> it's always it's always like that, Dan. If I haven't brought it up here for a while, there was like a kids page in the church bulletin and it's not there anymore. Chances are, you know, the money dried up and they can't even print the extra page. But like how many and I'm not exaggerating, how many more word searches including the word leprosy can you have? I, mean, I would take a picture of it every week and send it to my niece to crack her up. I'm just sort of like you just it is interesting to look forward to the, the contemplation and the anticipation of Lent, of Lent. for fish. Yes, exactly, exactly. Is that the official beginning of the fish fry season? Lent? Yeah. Lent. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. And Which, what date is that? Is Early. conveniently Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day this year. So oh, very easy. A couple of weeks. Well, then you all have to watch Life of Brian yeah. so you can see oh. the leper who got cured. That's right. No, absolutely. And absolutely. still wants to beg. Yes. And was undermined in it's that effort. Cured. because. Jesus had cured him. So, Dan, we may have to do some, like, family coordination. I mean, okay. trying is close to both of us, but if you all go to Sweetest Heart of Mary, I still have never been there. And it what? It's like it's a lot of fun. Yes. So, yes. Well, this is convenient. I can, I can take Kevin to a fish fry for Valentine's. Absolutely. What, you're not going to do the White Castle uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that meal? No hula burgers? 14 yeah. bagger or whatever it is. <laughs> White Castle is gross. Don't say it that. has its purpose. No. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. A man who imbibes beverages that some people have termed gross is Professor Dave Chow. <laughs> Pleasure to be here, as always. Now, you had the Honolulu Blue Powerade last week, and they won. Yeah. Spectacularly. Yeah. So, bless you. Let's hope that we get a chance to mm -hmm. do that again, shall yes, we? Indeed. That's why I'm drinking this. I got really enamored today, just, you know, randomly, but not randomly. Like, wow, if we win this game and go to the Super Bowl, that is two solid weeks of classic NFL hype. I think we could get into that. In the I mean, right there. Mm -hmm. you know, it's Seriously. uncharted territory. We totally don't know how uncharted. To react. That's we right. We do not have any idea. We don't know react. what to do with our hands. Yes, absolutely. We absolutely. just don't know what to do with our hands. Well, drink Powerade for today, but uh, other than that, uh, Professor Beth Oljar is also here with us. Hi. Good to What's be here. What's your, your shirt say? Cut oh, free or die. Cut free or die. It would only make sense. Yes. <clears throat> and skeleton with a toque. It's the yeah. design was by Anthony Bourdain. Bourdain yeah. Oh yeah, yep. that's right. So great, great. Who I was a big fan of. Yep, and proponent of Detroit uh, culinary arts. So that's fantastic. There's a big mural of him. I still haven't seen yet. I want to say down at Woodbridge. Come on, where is it? I don't know. Oh my <laughs> gosh, if Dave Chow doesn't know, then it doesn't uh -oh. exist. It must be well hidden if Dave Chow doesn't know where he is. There's too many nooks and crannies <laughs> right about now in town with murals showing up all over the place. You know, they told me after my surgery that, you know, with the anesthesia, you don't want to have anything greasy or spicy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, on the wound. <laughs> Go to McDonald's. Yeah, the, yeah I no. want 10 what? nuggets and a couple large fries. Well, no, no, Absolutely no, no. scarf They were talking down. about they don't want to grease oh, the salt on the wound. That doesn't mean yeah. you can't imbibe. No, that's no they said because of the, it might make me sick, and I'm like, Trust me. I'll take my chances. <laughs> you, you know what will make me sicker? Not eating what no. I want to eat. Exactly. There's yet another book out on Bourdain by the guy who produced maybe 10 years of his various shows. Oh. That I just saw that came out. Yeah. I think I did see that as well. Yeah. Which I, I, knew the name well, I have yeah. eaten, I've watched him eat some things that I never would have come within 50 feet of. <laughs> he was oh, a daring, yeah. daring epicure. Daring. Not quite as daring as Andrew Zimmer. And no. Really yeah. oh, used to eat <laughs> which, which Dan dined with years ago. Yeah. I you did at uh, yeah. at the Russell. Yes. You yes. Know. Really? Yes. I remember. Right. We had a chance actually, they asked us if we wanted to sit at his table. We did, it, I think it was Sharon. <gasps> Really? And, you, and, and you said wow. no. We, uh, anyway, we said I, I, you I'm not it. that kind of person, and um, but he was there. He, yeah, he yeah. I remember. That's cool. Well, That's the name of the cool. show gave him away, right? What was the? the it was uh, uh, oh, it was like gee, dangerous, meat impossible, strange foods, or something, yeah. something, yeah. Yeah, 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 something yeah. Like non-appetizing. Yeah. So yeah. he's a very engaging guy. I like I like this mm -hmm. show. Yeah. yeah. However, Dan, let's be serious. If they had said, would you like to dine with Andrew Zimmern and we're just going to have like I mean, a garbage bag pile of gnocchi, you would have been like, all right, yes. sign me up here. Yeah, let's, please. let's do we'll, this. We'll see you at the fish fry. <laughs> and, we'll, and they'll pick up the tab. Exactly. Well, folks, this is a program. You can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you can have one of these awesome Ethics Poll t-shirts. You can send us the questions in a number of ways. Email us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook and Instagram, or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor, 
at University of Detroit Mercy. Okie dokie smokey. Dear panelists, it's been a long time since I've admit, submitted questions to the show. Life gets in the way at times, but that's not an excuse. So here I go again, submitting a list of 20 questions in hope of achieving, achieving radio immortality. Once again, by being on the show, I had fun making the list, and I hope they prove worthy of the show. Enjoy. Best wishes, our friend Amy Dixon, D-I-X-O-N. Let's see what we got. Looks like we've got a classic all over the map. That's really, really good for a yeah, Friday where you need to unwind. Oh, Lordy. It's the year 2000. The Japanese reflected on the previous hundred years. What did the Japanese people consider to be their most important contribution to world society in the year 2000. And doing it in a very Japanese way, I'm sure there was a vote that everybody got at least one vote. VHS machines. Sushi. No. Uh, this is looking back over 100 years. It's basically looking back. You know, it's the year 2000, so you're being a little retrospective. What was, what's been our greatest contribution to society? <laughs> Is it food related? It is food related. Oh, sushi? Not, yeah, I, 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 I thought sushi. No, it's eel. Not, it's not sushi. It's not eel. Um, Irradiated fish. I feel fish. like Dan's got it churning in his head right now. Right. I see is it. It's it it happening. Uh, is it um, like soy sauce? No. It's no. not in the noodles. It's not in the condiment Tofu. aisle. What aisle is it in there? So Jim got it. It's instant ramen. That's oh, what no. I think is their oh, greatest ramen? contribution oh. to world society. Well, or certainly the most pervasive. Yeah, Every college, college campus, student yeah. is very familiar yeah. with it. That's absolutely true. <laughs> Some of us who are not in college are actually <laughs> yeah, me too. Of and it's, a, it's a wonderful staple. It, it is, is a wonderful is. staple. Yes. All it's those little, cheap, it's, it's amazing how many calories it has for such a. You don't salt. think about it. And how much salt? It well, yeah, yeah. Salt, that's what you're yes. supposed to use the packets. I, I was throwing the packets away. Oh my gosh! I like the packets. I like the packet. You guys want, just you guys want extra? I got this. I got a bag full. I had all kinds of stuff to it. Yeah. yeah, frozen shrimp, cooked yeah, frozen actually, shrimp, yeah, exactly. shrimp. Yeah, I had everything. Peanut it. butter. Yeah, uh, just eat them. You can uh, do chicken, chili crisp. You can do anything mm -hmm. you want. Anything. Yeah, that's yeah, a good base. Make it into like a pho. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sliced beef. A little miso. Mm -hmm. Yes, very nice. Yeah. So, did you notice? I know that you're all perusing, you know, old school Life magazines and modern advertisements for your Rolexes. Rolex will only ever have their products photographed. When they display what time? Wow. 10 after 10. How the freak do you know that? Because I have students that work for them. Yeah, it says 10 after 10 and 31 seconds oh, only. I didn't know about the 30 seconds. What? And for the it's, record, no explanation. That's that's a low blow. It like, is, I need to know why that is. It's a positive, upbeat look. What, so the hands, hands up. doing this? Yes. Oh. Okay. It's like the N in 7 Eleven being a lowercase. Oh, okay. Or like 10 okay. and 2. 10 and 2. Steering steering. All, right. All right. It's, it's a positive. Why, why 31 seconds? I don't know about the 30 <laughs> seconds. I know yeah. about the, the 10 and 2. You mentioned Rolodex. We're watching, uh, um, I'm re watching. Heather has never seen this. We're watching Mad Men. Oh, sure. And Rolodex. They had yep. Rolodexes yep. back yep. in the 60s mm -hmm. when the show was. Of course. Place. Of course. Now, of course, we've got all this stuff on our phone. Yes. I saw my roll of that. I didn't know whether it was going to be like, oh, that's the birthday of the founder or something like that. But you're actually doing it as sort of an aesthetic. It's a psychological. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yes. That, I'll take it. You know? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. What game show once had hosts such as Zoe Deschanel, mm. oh. Elaine Joyce, Brad Sherwood, Michael Bolton, and the big Detroit Mercy Connection giveaway, Chuck Woolard. When I was going what? into this Chuck Woolard. He went here? No, he has a connection oh. to What's-His-Face, who owns Absopure Water. Oh, and, oh yeah. Uh, he's a, the guy who made Absopure is an alum, and Chuck yeah. Woolery was in their ads for a long time. Oh, so Chuck Woolery did he was Wheel, of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Uh, yeah. No, what was it? The, the dating the Wheel of Fortune? Thing. No, it wasn't Wheel of Fortune, oh. but you're really close. And the day basically oh, was it the dating it. game? Yes, the dating game is what it was. Okay. Wow. Yes. No, or was it the love connection? It, that's not what it's. I think that Chuck Woolery was also the host of the dating game, hence all these other hosts. Hmm. Here, but yes, okay. Game, so. <laughs> I always got love connection and dating game mixed up, too. So I'm not going to take that away from you. Where's Tom Stanton when you need him? Who had the last hit at Tiger Stadium? Wow. Yes. That's great. Oh, Fantastic, I remember that game. by the way. It was a rooftop grand slam oh, to win oh. the game 
September 27th, 1999. Robert. Was it Robert Fick? It was Rob Fick. Yeah, yeah it was. That's, wow. Because I remember that was like his fire. crowning fire. glory, and then. Oh, he was done. After yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But hitting it over the roof, I mean, yeah. come on. That's wow. just amazing. Oh, my gosh. Amy, I think I'm starting to see a trend here. At the height of its success, sorry, how many stores did Harmony House have in the metro area? 32. 38, I'm giving it to you. Wow, yeah, I mean, 32 wow. is good. Harmony House was our place to go buy music. Yeah, that was big. Now, what was the last one? Was it Harmony House Classic or FYE by us? FYE. It turned into FYE. The one yeah, on Woodward? Yeah. 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 Exactly. But did, did Harmony House Classic outlive them or not? Good question. We had both of them on Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. North Tower Records, too. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I'm going to say it was jams. So they sell the uh, puppies. That's oh, what love them. Them. And the laundromat, too. And the laundromat. Why did Bob Barker uh, stop hosting the Miss Universe pageant? This is pretty easy to figure out, actually. Did he object to something? The objectification of women? He no. objected to not the objectification of women, no. but something yeah, else. If anything, was yeah. that related? It no. was. They wouldn't support spade and neuter? No, go the other way. They would support, no. <laughs> that doesn't work. They were. They were. They wouldn't con- ban fur. Yeah, it was. They had swag bags oh. with fur coats in them. And he's oh. like, this isn't happening. That's in a swag bag. Well, I don't know. Wow, it's swag suitcase. Who's yeah, keeping yes. Dietrich furs in in business? You know what? I, what can I, say? I always wondered about that. Actually, seriously, is this a chinchilla coat? That's which U.S. department store was the first to sell Birkenstock sandals? Um, okay. Sure. JC Penn. No. Nordstrom? It was Nordstrom. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're aiming. Yeah. yeah. No. Now, Shoes you... have always been their, their oh, okay. forte. Okay. Is oh. that why you thought about it? Because I was thinking like Hudson's or something like that. Uh, no, actually, I thought about them because my mom went to school with them. Okay. And knew their family the Nordstrom pretty people. well. Yeah. Well, yeah, because she was, her family had money in Seattle and interacted with other people in Seattle mm-hmm. who had money. So. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. <clears throat> What national park professors was once known or formerly known as Lafayette National Park? It's definitely not called that anymore. So by is it in Louisiana? Uh, I don't know where this park is. I'm oh. not a national park guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was wondering, is it in the south? Oh, Do not appoint me Secretary of the Interior. Pennsylvania? Starts with the letter A. You'll probably get it very quickly. Arcadia? Acadia. Oh, yeah, oh, Acadia. Acadia. Where is Acadia, Stephen? Maine. Uh, Maine. Maine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Lovely. Beautiful. Up there. Definitely yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. See, the first, awesome trees. see the first sunlight of the, the continent up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what's the deal probably. here? They didn't want to give the marquee like this dude? I mean, he had a connection to Maine. And what's yeah, who's this Acadia dude? dude? Well, it because the Acadian people came sure. there first oh, before sure. heading sure. down to New Orleans. That makes okay. sense. Okay. So the way down east. Mm-hmm. Which of the Great Lakes, oh geez, don't think too long, has the most industry surrounding it? 17 metro areas and more than 50,000 people are it's within Lake Erie. Michigan. Michigan. Lake Erie. This is Lake Erie, actually. I'm thinking Cleveland, Lake. Detroit, yes. Buffalo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's Toledo. Oh, okay. All right. And also, I mean, we don't forget just, Erie. Yeah, True. I know, I know. Rephrase the, the, the question. Whole, the whole of Dan Maggio. Yeah, you can't forget it. Yeah, come on. Dan Maggio is an Can't industry all the roller coaster industry. <laughs> I was going to say, rephrase the question. Which of the, of the five Great Lakes is the most polluted? And then you'd also get it. Oh, you know? In which state is the headquarters to the Shroom Bicycle Company? Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Washington? Uh, Washington? Oregon? Washington? Portland, Oregon? Oregon? Seattle, Washington? Washington, yeah. Oh, it's Washington. in Washington. Really? The Schwinn oh. Company. I thought they were more Midwest. But maybe not. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. Biking is pretty big out there. It is a big deal. And the tires are getting bigger on bikes. I still am not used to it. I think it's a little weird. Okay. Have you seen how the big the, the, tires the fat are tires are? The They're getting huge. Yeah, balloon the fat tires. tires. They're huge, like balloon tires. Have they you want you it? to be able to drive on sand. Uh, man, sure, sure. have you seen that gentleman? I remember a couple years ago when I was coming home from school. There's a gentleman that unicycles on Woodward with a fat tire bike. That sounds about right. Yeah. But he looks like Santa Claus. Oh, well, sure. Well, they've now built the, the bike lanes on yeah. the newly redone wood. Yeah, but I'm like, I side. saw him in Pleasant Ridge. I'm like, driving up, it's 9 o'clock at night. There's a little wizened old dude on a unicycle. I'm like, 
I love it. Hmm, you're I'm weird. really not sure this is a good idea, those bike lanes. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I yeah. assume the push is I know. environmental. Mm -hmm. I just don't think Woodward is really the best no. No. street to have bike. I mean, it drove me crazy and still no does about bike riders that they often just ignore <clears throat> stop signs and other Stop rules. Of the, yeah, it's like, well, you know, you're going to get smushed and nobody will have any sympathy for you. It's called and share the road. They're, they're to the right of the parking places. So you have the, the <clears throat> travel lanes and then yeah. you have the parking, parking lanes and then, and then the bike lanes. And, and yeah. going both ways. And the both way, ways. Way. This is my, uh, you know, about to turn 16 year old doing his studious, you know, driving practice with me. And we're going through Ferndale and he's looking at both sides. It's like, so they sat down at the table and they said, how can we dump it? The number of accidents possible right. on this road by letting the bikers go in both directions right. on both exactly. sides. It's like, and, and my thought is in oh, Michigan, man. I mean, right about now, okay, on a day like this, you could probably bike, but there's certain days that no, we're not going to see a bike on the roads at all. I have not even seen one yet, and I'm anxiously awaiting spring to say that I have not continued to see them. <laughs> uh, Props, who was the first U.S. president who got a code name from the Secret Service? Your hint is who didn't try very hard. General. Eisenhower. None of those. Oh, no. General. General. You okay. get a code name. Okay, well, the Secret the Service, Secret Service is post World War II. Yeah. Right? No, no, no. no, no or, uh, post Civil War. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah I thought it was Grant. Um, General Eisenhower. Who are the other generals? Well, it, uh, yeah, I guess I gave a really bad clue. I mean, the whole deal is that it's ironic. He's, he wasn't a general. Oh, oh, that was the code name. Oh, yeah, it was the code oh. name, oh. was General. And oh. I believe they did it because he wasn't. Who was that like Calvin Coolidge? No. Like, true more modern. It was true. true. Is what true. it says here. Yeah. So. Oh. I mean, he acted like a general. You know what I mean? So yeah. maybe that's it. I, I remember that I think it was H.W. Bush or maybe Reagan was Traveler. I'm like, you didn't, you didn't think very hard about that name. But you should just call him Man. Man's Dude. on the move. Like, <laughs> just didn't try very hard. Obama's was renegade. That's right. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. He was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Do they get to pick their own? No. I don't, I don't think, think, think they do. Yeah, I don't think they, they get to do that. In the family, everyone in the, the family has a the same name letter. that starts with the same, same letter. letter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Ross, what's the official language of Uganda? Uh, French. French. English. It's, it's English is what it's Because I just remember Idi Amin always spoke in English. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Kill him. Kill him. Idi Amin. Yeah, exactly. Some individual. <laughs> Thanks. The Broadway play Funny Girl was supposed oh. to be semi-biographical story based on what comedian? Fanny, Fanny Bryce. Bryce. Fanny Bryce, that's right. My favorite musical. Oh, that's pretty good. I didn't say. Oh, my. This Major League Baseball player was the youngest of 14. Hit a home run at the age of 16 at Tiger Stadium during an all-city high school game and played 14 years in a Tigers uniform. Four-time All-Star, coached the Yankees and White Sox, and as a Seattle Mariner, hit his 300th home run off of no less than Jack Morris pitching for the Tigers. Wow. Who was he? The only one, I'm thinking Detroiter that played for Detroit. The only one I can think of like Willie Horton. Willie Horton was who he was. was. Oh, yeah, there you exactly. go. Right. Wow. Detroiter who yeah. hit for Detroit. I've, I still see him from time to time over at um, Breadbasket. I was going to say, you see him at the deli because yeah. everybody says they see him there on Woodward. Is there... No, no, the one on uh, Greenfield. Oh, the one on Greenfield. Oh, okay, yes. my brother saw him at the one on Woodward okay, 14. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, he really likes the sandwich. He likes the bread. It shows. Wow. Oh, that's <laughs> so hilarious. Yeah, I would have said it was, uh, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to kind of miss him a little bit. He just didn't have the best season last year, Eric Hassa. He went to Divine yeah, Child. Yep, yep. You know, he was a buddy of Aiden Hutchinson and all that, but yeah. the Tigers yeah. let him go. So. Yep. How many times has Detective Charlie Chan been portrayed by anybody with Chinese descent. None. Not on, Zero. No, not on film, but on the cartoon. So it says here one. Key Luke, who played yes. number one son opposite of Warren Olin, was the voice actor in the cartoon. Yep. yep. That's oh. Like, that is, Charlie Chan and the Chan claim of all yep. things. <clears throat> oh my. The actress Jodie Foster is descended from a person who was on the Mayflower in 1620. Who is it? The Mayflower passenger? Bradford. No. Mm -hmm. Initials J.A. I don't know. John Alden? Yeah, it was John Alden. Mm -hmm. I don't know my Mayflower Manifest, so uh, I'm going to leave that up to all you uh, 
Well, I know my wife's family. Her, my Marcy's aunt did the search, and they are somehow related. Oh, really? Okay. She's in a new series too, Jodie Foster. Yes, That's right. amazing. Yeah. It's so good. Mm-hmm. She is, although looks amazing. I saw the photo. She's never going to do anything better than the accused. Her best performance, mm-hmm. without question. That was good. Yeah, that's good. That was good. What are the four major jumping-related events in track athletics? Long, Long jump, jump, high jump, jump, high jump, triple jump, triple jump, triple jump. Uh, I can't jump. And the pole vault. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the can't jump. Oh my god! The pole, the pole the vault is. Jump. They awesome. consider the pole vault a jump. Uh, they do. Sure. They do. I, guess, I mean, well, the mud hole feet. hop. Yeah, See your feet, feet, right? Dan, like the old this. name was pole assist. I'm making this up. Pole assisted traverse oh. of you know. No, I, I can't even come up with it. What was that one sport they do? Shut up. Overseas, where you run along and you stick a pole in the in the drink and you climb up the and you land on the other side. What's that? Steeple. No, it's steeple. Is that steeple? No. 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 You know what I'm talking about, right, Jim? No. You I know. You, you, you literally you're, you're jumping from one. You know, you're you're like like a bog and you run, you grab a pole. And people chase. Is it? I don't know. You, you know, know you've seen people chase is you're jumping over like hedges or right. yeah, 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 wooden fences. But you know what I'm talking about. Right? See, have you seen it? No. Oh, great. I'm the only geek that sees that one. Okay. So this we'll is actually on. a way of getting somewhere. Yes. It's not really yes. about how right. far you yeah. This is something that's in obscure, obscure so sport obscure. Yes. Yes. right? Yes. Like yes. the dodgeball tournament. Oh, yeah. That's obscure? Yeah, ESPN fifteen. Did nothing. Dodge. Speaking speaking of weird sports, have you ever seen? I catch these videos every so while on like Instagram. Slapping. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. What, what is going on in this world? I do not know. wrong, wrong and wrong. Yeah. I do if not you like know. dislocating your jaw, it's like, your sport. That's br- that brutal. And then the chalk. And then chalk. Dan, how can then you bring that up without me mentioning Monty Python and the fish slap? Oh yeah, that's the best. Oh, cool. <laughs> Why isn't that a sport? Why isn't that a sport? You know? <laughs> this is actually pretty interesting. You know, I like many people. I think for my generation, I thought that the you know the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame mm-hmm. that it was like something that you were earned. You know, like an Oscar. Well, now you know you basically have to buy. You pay it for it. Yeah. Yeah. Reach a certain level. You have to be whatever. invited to pay for it. Yes. Yes. That is why that is true. <laughs> You can't shop at this Target, sir. Um, <laughs> kind of like going to Shrine. Yeah, well, oh, oh, very geez. much so. Very much so. <laughs> Who is the only actor on the Hollywood Hawk of Fame to have on his star his name and the character he played? Oh. Because that character was so um, famous. That's a, that's a good piece of trivia. Huh. Everybody else, it's just their name. But this one is Who's this person, person dash character. What, was it a, a character he played or a voice? He did. It was a character. Was an actual character from television, if I'm remembering correctly. So he played the Lone Ranger. Or yeah, something? Clayton Moore. The oh, Lone Ranger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. right. Nice. Well, I only knew yeah. the character, not the well, actor. Well, who's silver? No, and then you, do you remember you also had that lawsuit where they had, they made him take the mask off? Oh, you know, and he went. He got glasses in the shape of the mask. Right. Oh, right. oh that man, was that's sick. weird. What is I, the name of the Lone Ranger's nephews? <laughs> <laughs> that's so <laughs> great. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> um, uh, this, this is wild. Who is the only American football player to have won the Heisman Trophy, the College Football Championship, the NFL MVP, the Super Bowl, and be chosen as Super Bowl MVP? Again, not all in the same season, but uh, very, very famous from the 1980s. Deion uh, Sanders. Uh, it's a good, it's a good guess. I'm Initials M.A. Marcus Allen. Marcus Allen is who it was. That is highly decorated. I'm wow. just going to put that, that out there. Yeah. Wow. So I only came to know this, honestly, over the last few months, because somehow it ended up on the internet and made a couple you know, rounds and all that. What's a Pittsburgh potty? I've never heard of this before, but here it is. Where's Jason when we need him? Pittsburgh potty. A Pittsburgh potty. potty. P-O-T-T-Y? Yes. Yes, it is. Is that food related? A honey is... bucket? No. No. That was where my That's mind would have wandered to. No. This is like a drinking game or something like that. I mean, you know. is it street related? No, it's actually super duper duper literal because apparently the steel and coal workers would come home and not be permitted to use the nice bathroom on the first floor. An outhouse? So a lot like, of cars. Like, like a mud room? Cars, I'll try again. Almost. Uh, you would have a freestanding toilet not in a room in the middle of your basement. 
Pittsburgh. Oh. Which, by the way, a lot of houses around here have as well. Honestly, the ones built after World War II. But apparently, it's nicknamed the Pittsburgh Potty. A freestanding toilet in the middle of the basement. With no walls around it or anything. Yeah. This is the real deal. Wait, so so you come home from work from the steel mill and to clean the yourself up to clean yourself up so you don't need to. Yeah. So you don't How track does the potty clean. You I up? knew you were going to see it. All I do is read the questions. Well, perhaps there is you know there is a shower shower with the potty near it, right? I mean, possibly. Was this hooked up to the plumbing? I mean, the way oh, you, oh yeah, one hundred percent. It's part of the foundation of the house. Well, so yeah. there would be water pipes. So yeah, I mean, probably there's a sink or something. Exactly. Why, why, why didn't they call it Pittsburgh shower or something? Like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because then because you don't get Jim's the question becomes even more silly. <laughs> well, it's a shower without walls. Give yourself oh. a swirly and get ready for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, Lord. Give me a break. Oh. oh. Oh, jeez. Professors, I'm so sorry. Sometimes oh, no. the questions oh. just go the way they're supposed oh. to go. The time has come for us. And this, and this is how we send Jim Tubbs off goodbye. on his cruise. Uh, Beth. <laughs> goodbye. Dave. <clears throat> Dan. Goodbye. Jim. Goodbye. And Stephen. Goodbye. Now these words from the University of Detroit Mercy. You can email Ask the Professor at atp at udmercy.edu or visit the Ask the Professor Facebook page. Ask the Professor is produced and directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo.